for me, the greatest gift of manifesting is that it empowers you to become the very best version of yourself that can exist. Manifesting is not actually about like this really intense control. It's about knowing what you want and then letting it go. Every day we have thousands of decisions that we make and you can always ask yourself two questions. Is this the most self-loving decision I could make? Mm -hmm. And what would my higher self do? Welcome to 8020. I'm Shanina Shaikh and I'm here with Georgia Sinclair. We are filming in sunny Los Angeles at Spring Place. And today I have another close friend of mine who I've known for a few years now. She is a self-development coach and speaker and a manifestation expert. We have here Roxy Nafusi. Oh, Yay! Thank you so much Yay. for having me. I feel like we manifested you onto this yes, couch. Yes, we did. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. Well, I think about our history. It's kind of interesting too because you reached out to me during the pandemic. Oh, I manifested doing that with you. So yeah. I uh. was so desperate to be on it. It was your wellness series on IG Live during yes. the pandemic. And yeah. I was like, I just so want to be on it. Like I was such a fan. Oh, thank I, you. I really like definitely manifested that. So I love that it's come full circle. Full circle. Oh, that's awesome. It's um I did a wellness Wednesday's IG live series during the pandemic and it was kind of like this that was the DNA of 8020 and, yeah. so, and on my side um and my stories and I I'm a huge believer in manifesting. And so when Roxy reached out and I saw your work and your motivation and speaking, I was like this makes sense. And now that I have, I was on your podcast and now yeah. that I have my podcast, I was like, this makes sense. And she lives in London most of the time, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And then I, don't, I reached out to you. I was like, I have a feeling you're coming. I don't know why. I was just like, I think you're going to be coming to LA. And I had a feeling and I was like, let me reach out to her. And you said yeah. you are. Yeah. And we just made it happen. And it was literally, because this is your last filming day, isn't it? Yes. And yes. It's, yeah. it's my first day here mm -hmm. so it, it aligned perfectly aligned I don't know perfectly. how we managed to do that because <laughs> Shanine and I film in blocks because <laughs> I live in New York right. so the fact that this crossed over and you were here from London really is oh. the universe oh. yes <laughs> well hopefully it means that there's somebody out there that really needs to hear this yes. yes yeah I'm sure a lot of people will get a lot of value out of today's episode yeah how did you begin your work with manifesting First of all, yeah. Um, okay, so when it was back in May 2018, so at that time I was 27 and I was at rock bottom. Um, I had basically been in a battle with addiction to cocaine and alcohol and I was smoking like 25 cigarettes a day. I had no job, no career, no self-worth. Um, and had really been suffering from depression for my whole life. You know, at the time people weren't really talking about mental health. So I think if you'd said to me, you're suffering from depression, I would have felt really embarrassed or ashamed. There was still mm. such a stigma around it, but 100% depression was a part of my life since my earliest years. Um, and I had basically gone on this yoga teacher training course because if anyone's got any experience with addiction, you'll know that you kind of, you keep wanting to give up and try different things. And one mm -hmm. of the things I had decided to do was to book myself in a yoga teacher training course. And I thought, like if I go away for a month and I'm meditating all day and doing 200 hours of yoga and I'm away from all my vices, that's going to be the thing that's going to change me. Mm -hmm. And what happened was I got back to London and within 24 hours I was back taking drugs and I went on a 48 hour bender, went home with someone. And I remember after that waking up so full of shame and regret and feeling completely hopeless because I thought, well, if that's not going to change me, what will? Mm. So I called a friend of mine, Sophia, and Sophia is quite, she's like an ethereal princess, I always say, but she, and she is into much more like woo and spiritual kind of practices. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, babe, don't worry. Listen to this podcast I just listened to on manifesting. And I was like, fuck it, I'll try anything. Mm. <laughs> so I listened to this podcast and what kind of clicked for me was that manifesting was all about self-worth. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I have no self-worth. So maybe I am manifesting, but in the wrong direction. I see. So I went home and I started researching this practice of manifestation. 
And two weeks later, on the 7th of June, 2018, a man named Wade messaged me on a dating app. And a year to the day, on the 7th of June, 2019, our baby boy Wolf was born. Oh, Oh, amazing. It was so magical. And really what happened was I started to immerse myself in the practice of Really, actually, it wasn't just that I was immersing myself in manifestation as such. I was immersing myself in self-development as a whole. Mm. I was reading from with, from so many different kind of philosophers and thinkers and um, healers and listening to podcasts and, you know, watching motivational YouTube videos and, you know, Tony Robbins and Brené Brown and Jay mm. Shetty and just kind of learning as much as I could to heal myself. Yeah. And at first that was all it was supposed to be for, but then I realized that this was my purpose and I was all the pain I had been through was to help other people. And so I then developed my own unique seven step guide to manifesting, which kind of covered everything that I thought anyone would need to know about manifesting. And, um, and then here we are. Oh, wow. Amazing. So you mentioned, you just mentioned the seven steps yeah. to manifestation. What are the seven steps? Um, okay. So this is really top line, but uh, step this is the juice. Get your pens and papers. Yeah. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> um, okay. So step one is be clear in your vision. Essentially, you can't get to where you want to go if you don't know where it is you are headed. Mm-hmm. And so at this very first step, I really ask people to just get clarity on what they want their life to look like six months, one year or five years from now. And try to be really specific with your goals. Because a lot of people will say things like, I want to be happier. I want to be more successful. But mm-hmm. without defining what is it that actually makes you happy or what does success look like to you? Mm-hmm. But actually, it's even more than just your goals. It's thinking about who do you want to become? Mm-hmm. And I think that for me, the greatest gift of manifesting is that it empowers you to become the very best version of yourself that can exist. And, you know, my, you know, the thing I'm most grateful for when it comes to manifesting is that it's given me this sense of confidence and inner peace and joy that I never thought was possible. Yeah. So the things that you attract are kind of like the cherry on top, but actually who you become, that's the real glory in it. I agree. Um, exactly. You know, right? It's, yeah. It's that. So then um, within that step, you know, it's about visualization, vision boards, visualization meditations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I think, that don't understand manifesting think that that's where this practice starts and ends, that you make a vision board, you think about what you want, and then you wait for it to happen. And I Mm. think that's why there's a lot of cynics around manifesting Mm. Um, but that's not it at all it's step one and there's six more to go so step two is the most important step of manifesting and that's remove fear and doubt so fear and doubt is a culmination of our insecurities low self-worth limiting beliefs and we all have buckets of it Mm. and i believe that no matter what it is we want from our lives the two things that are blocking us from currently having it are our fear and doubt Mm. and the reason for this is because we can only manifest when we subconsciously believe we are worthy of receiving Mm. so you can think about the dream house or the dream partner all you like but if you don't believe you're worthy of receiving it deep down, you won't be able to attract it. And so with removing fear and doubt, this really is an ongoing process and it's a commitment to a healing journey and to going inward and to um, freeing yourself from your past, from those wounds and those traumas and all the things that are currently keeping you locked in a feeling of not being enough as you are Mm. um and in the books you know i have lots of like little practices that people can use day to day to reprogram their belief systems um but on top of that i also really recommend that people do go further in their work with therapy counselors you know inner child work is so powerful yeah Yeah, um so then step three is align your behavior and aligning your behavior is about showing up as your future self It's about um, behaving and acting as your most empowered self and making decisions that are aligned with that version of you. And that really encourages you to step outside your comfort zone, to uh, change what your daily habits are, what your daily routine looks like. Um, You know, because if you're thinking every morning when you wake up, you have decisions to make, right? Do Mm. I snooze my alarm? Do I work out? Do I take my supplements? Do I eat a healthy breakfast that's going to like fuel me right? Or do I have just something, you know, a pastry that I know is going to make me crash? These are all little decisions that you have to make, even just in those first couple of hours. Mm. Yeah. 
And if you can answer those decisions from an empowered place and as your higher self, then you're going to set yourself up for a better day. Mm -hmm. And if you start doing that every day, then what's your week, month and year then going to look like? So every every day we have thousands of decisions that we make. And you can always ask yourself two questions. Is this the most self-loving decision I could make? Mm -hmm. And what would my higher self do? So mm. I love this step. And this step is also really about being proactive. It's about, um, you know, it's about motivation and consistency and self-discipline. And I think where step two, remove fear and doubt, comes from this quite feminine energy. It's about nurturing yourself. It's about kind of parenting yourself. Okay. Imagine then that, you know, on the other side, step three is about that masculine energy. It's about that doing. The action. Fire and motivation, exactly. The same. Step four is overcome tests from the universe. Mm -hmm. So I believe that on your way to your manifestation goals, the universe will provide you with tests, which basically ask you how worthy do you really think you are of receiving? Mm -hmm. And the kind of easiest example of this is that if you are trying to manifest your perfect partner yeah. and you go on a date with someone okay. and this date is incredible. And bear in mind, you've already done step one. You've written your list of your perfect person, what that relationship feels like. You've worked on your healing journey, believing mm. you're worthy of, you know, uh, unconditional love. You've aligned your behavior by going on dating apps or letting your friends set you up. And then you go on this date and it's incredible and the chemistry is fine. You're like, oh my God, Roxy was right. I've done it. I can't this believe this This is the one. Here he is. This is the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So quickly. Yeah. Um, and then the next day you don't hear from them. Oh. And then three days later they text you and they're like, hey, what's up? This is a test. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, oh. this is the test. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the test is how worthy do you really think you are? And I am doing good, sweetie. <laughs> okay, so the reason <laughs> Shanita keeps looking at me well, sweetie, is Tell because me. I've had this exact situation happen Literally. to me uh, recently. Week. And I was like, okay, great. Great it's guy, no not the me. guy. Awesome. Yeah, yes. she's move, move doing on. good. Oh my God, I love yeah. that. Yeah. You know not what's going to so happen proud of her. is the universe will reward you. Like, please text Yay. me when it happens. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I'm so here for this because every She's time, getting good at it. Oh, When usually, like, yes. the girls is like, well, maybe I'll just give him a chance. Yeah. And I don't know, no. like, do you give him a chance? It's like, no, but it's like, if he really wanted, if he really wanted you, if he really, Definitely. it's like you have the community because I feel like, you would do that yeah. for the other person, right? Because you're interested. You yeah. want to get to know them. You feel like, hey, that's the person I really want to know. And I think they're great. And I think they're going to be amazing for me. And I don't want to. Yeah, so it's like swap the table a little bit. So. I feel like exactly. this guy is great. He's just not ready. And it's not my problem. Nothing oh my to God. do with me. You've not got fucking time. Yeah. yeah. Like, please. Whatever. Yeah. I think, you know, we've got to think that we're always like, the universe is energetic power. For me, it's just, the universe is just energy. For some people, it's God. Yeah. For some, it's a spiritual realm. But the universe is always watching what you're doing, how you're thinking, how you're behaving. Mm. Okay. And what you want to always be doing is showing up and showing the universe, I believe I am worthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? So if you are able to be like, no, I'm worth more than that, you will be rewarded. And it happens every single time. Mm. And so, Another part of this step is really about knowing when you need to stop settling and where in your life you need to let go of what's not serving you so that you can create space for what is. Mm -hmm. And it's also about how you overcome challenges because manifesting, for me, this is a life practice. This is a way I live my life day to day. I don't kind of dip in and out. It's just it's just a guide of mm. a guide to living. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that means that we have to account for real life, which will come with challenges and rejection and obstacles. Mm. But what this manifesting process asks you is to be able to see all these challenges as opportunities for growth, for learning, for evolving, rather than things that are going to, you know, stunt your growth. Or, or you know, somebody might say a challenge might occur and in, in, in when they're on their way to trying to manifest something and they'll go, oh, see, I knew it wasn't meant for me or yeah. I knew I wasn't good enough. And that's one perspective you can take. But if you take that perspective, of course, you're going <laughs> to block yourself. Yeah, putting it on a negative pedestal in some way. Exactly. It's like a wall and it's like, well, I've been doing the work and then this crap happened. So yeah. that, like it kind of like puts you back, but it's like, no, this is meant to happen. So you can still get to exactly. where you want to go. It is. And I really, this... It's my favorite step because, you know, over the last few years, I've used this practice to change my life in so many ways. I mean, in every way. But it doesn't mean that I've had like a perfect few years. You mm -hmm. know, I've, there's been so many tough and challenging times. But 
what this has given me is that even in those times where I feel like I'm spiraling, things are tough, things are not going right, I remain optimistic. Mm. And optimism for me isn't feeling happy all the time. It's knowing that even on the dark days, better days are coming. Mm -hmm. And so I always have this attitude. I'm never, I don't have that hopeless feeling that I had before. Yeah. I'm like, okay, something good is coming on the other side of mm. this. And it always is. Mm, yeah. And anybody listening, anybody who's had a hard time, remember afterwards when you up leveled, mm. like you know you did. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and why wouldn't that happen again and again and again? Mm -hmm. um, step five is then embrace gratitude. So I call it the manifesting sweet spot, which is knowing what you want whilst being entirely grateful for all that you already have. Yes. Mm. And so cultivating this attitude of gratitude is integral. And I think that there's kind of two, two reasons why it's so important. One is that gratitude is just so important for our overall well-being. And there is so much scientific mm. research to show that it improves sleep, depression, anxiety. Um, there's the, even that great... Um, experiment that Dr. Joe Dispenza did where he asked people to practice gratitude three times a day for four days in a row and it showed oh, wow. that their immune system strengthened by 50%. Wow. wow. Which is phenomenal. And so that really, when I heard that, I remember really thinking, wow, the power of your mind is changing not only how you feel, but your physiology. Mm. Yes. You know, that's incredible. And so I always say, look, if, if anybody didn't listen to anything I said, but they just started a gratitude practice, mm. that would in itself would be life-changing enough. Yeah. Wow. And also, you know, manifesting isn't just about the goals. It's actually about enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about making the life you already have feel as good as possible. And when we're able to do daily, you know, and, and again, in the book, there's lots of different gratitude practices that I recommend. But when you can choose one and commit to it, you're retraining your brain to focus on the good in your life, you know, really showing it that each day is filled with beautiful moments that otherwise just go completely unmet, you know, unnoticed. Mm. So... It's a kind of, it's also putting you in this abundant mindset. And you know, when you talk about manifesting, there's scarcity mindset and abundant mindset. So an abundant mindset is a belief that there's enough to go around. And scarcity, of course, is that there's a, a lack. Mm -hmm. And if you are sitting in that scarcity mindset, I believe you keep yourself stuck. You keep yeah. attracting lack. Yeah. Whereas if you uh, sink into this abundant mindset by practicing gratitude, I already feel abundant. You keep attracting it to you. I mean, I honestly think this is my one of my like superpowers is being able to sink into an abundant mindset. And actually for anybody wanting to, you know, go into abundant mindset, I'd say there's a few tips you can do. One is uh, practicing gratitude. Okay. So feeling that you already have a lot and not focusing on one you don't have. Another would be being generous with others. So be generous with what you have. I think it's such a great act of, um, feeling of, of abundance. Mm. So it could be that you are sharing your advice. It could be that you're sharing your contacts. It could be that you're buying your friend a coffee, or, you know, or whatever it is. But that act of generosity, I think, really helps you to sink into that abundant mindset. Another I'm one, an abundant mind. Yes. I did it this morning. Yes. yes. Yeah, bought a coffee. Yes, she, oh, yes. <laughs> she did. I, well I got up after Shanina this morning because I'm, I'm staying with her right now while yeah. we're in town filming. And I came downstairs with a lovely cup Oh, blue bottle. It was just lovely. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> so cute. Very like, sweet. She's got a, one of, you know, very hot almond milk latte. <laughs> Are you an extra hot kind of girl? I'm an extra hot, like oh burn all my taste buds stop. off kind of girl. Yeah. yeah. I order mine warm. Because no. I oh, really? Yeah. So they're like, it's almost like a baby chino. <laughs> wow. I, we'd, I, well, I order extra hot too because I order it to pick it up and Drop um, it like yeah, it's I, always I drop, cold, drop, but yeah. time to get back. Yeah, yeah. so I don't know, yeah, but abundant mind. I love that your generosity. Um, and another one is celebrating other people's success. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. nice. Which kind yeah. of leads us on to step six, which is turn envy into inspiration. So envy comes from the scarcity mindset. So it comes from you have something, and that might mean less for me. Mm. Whereas the antithesis of this is inspiration. You have something and I can have it too. There's enough for everybody. Mm. I and think I that's really nice and really important. It's so yes. important. Because I've been in situations where I want the best for my friends and absolutely, but I've found, and I'm like, okay, this is normal. I'm envious and it's made me so hurt because I'm like, I want it so badly. Mm. 
But then I'm like, I don't want ill of that. Like, I don't want to make them like yeah. something bad. But then it's like, that's just changes the mind frame of like, I can have this too. Like, yeah. how do I get there? Yeah, it's expanding you. Yes. It's mm. such a good shift. And we all do get envious. Like it's normal. Yeah. It's just a fear response. Mm. It's just coming from those wounds that are unhealed or mm. it's showing us what we still want. Mm. And I think it can, you know, I think that growing up, we often get told that, you know, envy is this real monster and it's really mm -hmm. shameful to feel it, yes. and, you know, but of course it's natural, you know, but it's just having that awareness of when's it coming up for you. It might, and it's horrible when it's a friend because mm. you're like, oh my God, I, what's happening? Yeah. But it's okay. It's just knowing that you can like know it, be aware of it so it doesn't linger and then kind of turn into resentment or anything like that mm -hmm. and then transform it. Okay, so let's say you're on Instagram and you're scrolling and someone's on holiday and you're like, initial thought is like, oh my God, I can't believe they're on holiday again. Do they ever work? Yeah. You know? But then you can transform it to, God, do you know what? Actually, I'm so excited to travel. Mm -hmm. And that place looks really great. I'm going to put that on my vision board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for them. Yeah. You know, so it's just that really nice shift. And it just makes us feel so much better. Yeah. But again, helps us on that manifesting process because it's putting us in that abundant mindset. I yeah. think it gives you such a good guide as well. Like I look at uh, people in my industry who are, you know, at a who are more successful than me. Uh, and I'm a DJ outside of this podcast. Right, yeah. And I look at them, I'm like, cool, that's awesome. I'm so happy for them. Like what are the steps in between – where I'm at and where, they, yeah. where, where they're at and how do I get there and create my own version of that? Like it gives you a that. guide, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for planting the idea that I need to travel to that place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, I didn't even think about that, but now. <laughs> right, if you didn't see it, you wouldn't know. And they've been there, so they must have a contact exactly. that I can get Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I was like, let's think about the ways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, I think what could be really nice is if you're struggling with it, mm. you know, so you have to kind of, force yourself so send that person a message and it's not being fake send them a message and be like hey i just want to say i'm really happy for you mm. like that well done you because actually sometimes like my dad always used to say to me he's like if you're feeling down you know just smile because you're almost like faking it till you're making it you're mm. getting more oxygen in and you will start to feel better and it's like that <laughs> I, if you, that. I shouldn't say i hate that i've been like in situations like just smile and i've been like really upset about something oh, and like yeah. in a relationship and i'm like <laughs> I'm like crying. Again. No, I get you. I was I like, I can't you. smile. Yeah. Like, okay. yeah, you bloody smile. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I kind of get Cringe. where you're yeah. coming from. No, it's yeah. true. And yeah. actually, if you were feeling like that pang of envy and actually instead you forced yourself to be happy for that person and even send a message of congratulations or maybe it's a comment under a post, yeah. you will actually be like, oh, that felt nice to do that. Mm. And then it kind of dissipates any like ill feeling towards that person. I yeah. think it's, mm -hmm. it's nice. Um, so then step seven is trust in the universe. And this is really all about surrender. So manifesting is not actually about like this really intense control. It's about knowing what you want and then letting it go. And I think people struggle with this because they can get quite desperate for their goals. You know, mm. they can become quite obsessive. And, and I quick don't know, fixes or shortcuts. Exactly. And, mm. and I don't know about you guys, but for sure, if I've ever really desperately wanted something, it never comes to me. It's yeah. like I hold it off. Whereas if you can, yeah. if you have that feeling of, I know I'm going to get this. I know it's coming to me. That unwavering confidence is so magnetic. And mm. in the end, it's what really draws it in. Mm. So I always say this step is like the glue that holds the rest of the steps together. Mm. You know, you're supposed to know what you want and then just work on what you can day to day, which is the healing journey that you will always be on. Um, aligning your behavior by taking action, overcoming challenges, turning envy into inspiration, practicing gratitude, and then knowing that if you do all that, you will manifest the life that you deserve and desire. This wow. is so great that you've created a book with practical steps that people yeah. can just say, okay, step one, I do this. Step two, I do this. Yeah. And you've created more than one book, right? Yeah. yeah. So the first book I wrote in eight weeks, which was just an incredibly short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that book is, or what I quite like about it is like it's really short and easy to read and mm. it's really accessible. Mm -hmm. And it's on audiobook as well, which people are loving because I think sometimes it's easier. I mean, I actually quite like listening to audiobooks rather than reading books. But yeah. yep. um, 
you know, I think it, it's really easy, but because I wrote it in such a short time, I then still had so much more to say. So the orange book is like the first book. So that's really the gateway. It's everything you need to know, filled with tips, you know, read that. And I guarantee, I can't imagine anyone reading that and not having, making a positive impact on their life. Yeah. Awesome. And can't wait to read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got you two copies. We've got oh, you really? copies. Yes. We've got oh, you copies. Amazing. Um, I'll read it and today. And then the <laughs> second book is Manifest Dive Deeper, also known in the US as Manifest in Action. Mm -hmm. And that really does just delve deeper into the healing journey. And it's part workbook. So there's loads of journaling exercises for people to fill out. Great. Mm -hmm. um, new perspectives, new ideas, and any questions that people People were asking me after the first book I then answered in the second book and then something really really important and great too and manifestation for kids yes <gasps> can the kitty so the kids can do it too yes so manifesting for kids it's manifest for kids four steps to being the best you and so cute. um it is to me like I said, manifesting is like a self-development practice. So what this book is, it's not teaching kids that they can just like think about what they want. And because I think that would actually be really damaging for children. Mm. What this book is, is introducing them to the self-development practice and the things that I think are the foundations of manifesting. So step one is understanding emotions. Yep. So I kind of give kids toolboxes for each of the trickier emotions like fear, sadness, guilt, embarrassment, anger, um, and worry. And I give them toolboxes. So I'm introducing them to things like breath work and affirmations and how to validate their emotions and express them in a healthy way. Mm. Um, and then step two is uh, self-belief and confidence. Obviously, the foundation, the earlier we can start that, the better. Mm. Step three is gratitude, giving them lots of pra practices to develop a more grateful mindset, okay. which... I mean, these practices will influence their whole life. Yeah. yeah. And then step four is goal setting, right? Introduce them to, you know, how to use visualization and how to set goals and over, you know, persist through challenges. So wow. I would say it's the book that I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. because, I can see why. Because yeah. I think if I had it when I was younger, it would have been. Yeah. <laughs> I would like, I'm going to pass that on to my little one. How old... How old can you be for like for the children to start on the manifestation? So the book is aimed at kind of age seven up. Mm -hmm. But if you have younger children, there's a note for parents at the back as well. I would highly recommend reading it yourself as a parent because you can start implementing these things from their earliest years. So those toolboxes, when you understand them as a parent, you're able to pass them on to even really young children, you know, three, four teaching them how to breathe, you know, yes. when they're feeling angry, mm. you know, teaching them gratitude practices. So with Wolf, my son, who's four and a half now, since he could communicate, I would do this practice every night before bed. And it's in the book where as just before he falls asleep, I'll say, what was the best thing that happened today? Mm. And I make him think of something and then I go, and what was another thing? What was another thing? And I make him keep telling me until he can't think of any more. And then I do it back. So mm. I say to him, these are the things, when they're really young, kids don't ask you questions. So you have to volunteer that information. Yeah. So I'm like, let me tell you my good things. But yeah. now that he's older, he'll go, mommy, what was your best thing from today? It's so Aww. sweet. Aww. Beautiful. Um, but what it's done, and I can absolutely see it, is it has developed a more positive mindset mm. in him because he is definitely not a kid that goes around like complaining, moaning. He's like, mm. this is amazing. This Aww. is the yeah. best. Oh, I love this smell. You know, it's wow. so sweet. And there's, there's even a video of him and his cousin at the same age and his cousin's going, oh, my legs are tired. <laughs> I'm, it's too hard. And Wolf goes, you can do it just a bit longer. And I was oh, like, I've wow. never Aww. felt prouder. My little heart. <laughs> wow. It's cool. so cute. What a and, lovely um, thing to teach kids. So, you know, yeah. those practices do make a really big impact. Yeah. I think um, processing emotions has come up a lot um, in our practice of just talking to experts. Mm -hmm. And I consider you an expert too. But, like, it's really important, I think, to – to have that routine at a really young age. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to implement that with Zai. Um, he can't say much right now. It's more like, do you want to eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, me? And I was like, okay, but slowly, slowly. Oh, yeah. But also breath work. Mm. Breath work is really important. And I really want to implement that for him as well. And, you know, tantrums for the toddlers, is I'm like trying to slowly, slowly like – have let him have his moment Definitely. but like sit with him and breathe and give him a hug but yeah. it's like that's one thing like I think parents are scared of like oh my god they're having a tantrum like stop them and yeah, do that yeah. but it's like 
I'm not going to tell you how to parent or what to do. Yeah, yeah. But allowing them to feel that emotion Definitely. and know that they're supported and talk them through it in some 100%. way, even as they're so young, because yeah. it's like we're, we're teaching them, right? Definitely. I think I just feel for kids like they're so full of emotion and mm. they don't mm -hmm. understand what's happening. Like it must yeah. be so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really easy to be like stop or shout at them back, you know, mm. and actually all that's doing is making them feel that they're not they're not validated in, in their kind of expression. Mm. And also I think it, it gives this, uh, I, my, it's my belief that I think when we're constantly telling kids like, don't do this, don't cry, don't sh don't be angry, share, don't be selfish, don't be yeah. jealous, you know, those kind of things. Mm. You know, and obviously there's a line, but when we're constantly like that, what we're teaching them is you're not good enough as you are. Yeah. You need mm. to mold yourself to be loved. Yeah. And so, you know, I definitely think- Or make others feel comfortable because exactly. you're being too- too much too mm. loud too exactly so i think being able to just be with children and hold them and give them a safe space no matter what they're expressing is a really magical and beautiful thing to do oh i love that absolutely i i want the kids book i don't have kids but i just want the kids book <laughs> just, honestly it's yeah. great yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> i feel like the adults could learn a lot from that too <laughs> yeah um i don't wanted to talk about this and if, if you don't want to talk about it you, well, you don't have to of course um, you've been quite vocal about your relationship and meeting with your partner. Um, and then I remember I was looking at your Instagram and I saw this amazing post that you guys were working it out and you got back together and then you were like very vocal and, you know, sharing with your community and your audience. So it's like, Hey, it didn't work out, but yeah. this was a beautiful, how was that process for you? And like, how did your beliefs and, you know, guide help yeah. you? Well, I think that what was really amazing was that Wade and me were definitely like meant to me and we're still, you know, it's been five years and, you know, there's been no one that's more consistent in my life since. Mm. And we are absolutely like the best of friends and soulmates on one level. Yeah. Um, I think that because we're both very invested in self-development and healing, it yeah. was actually more of a we love each other so much and we could make this work, but we would be happier as individuals if we were apart romantically. Mm. And I think that's a really empowering place to be. And actually we kind of split up and then we were like, maybe actually we could make it work. And then we decided actually, you know what? I think this is best. And what we really wanted for Wolf, I grew up with, uh, you know, my parents were not in love at all. And I think I know what that experience is like. Mm. And I think it would be so much healthier for Wolf to see two happy parents rather than like force ourselves to stay together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And it's been a great experience for us. Wow. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's ups and downs. I mean, yeah. God, Wade will say it too. I mean, there's times where we literally hate, hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, normal. Which is kind of normal yeah. together yeah. or not together, yeah. honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we recover very quickly. And at the end, we have always given each other a great deal of respect. Mm, and we've important. never tried to change the other person. So yeah. it's always come from a place well, of Well, it's fruitless if you do. Yeah, love and acceptance. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you have yeah. to be, you have to be, allow that person exactly. to flourish. Exactly, although I'm just starting to think about dating again. Oh, really? And I was thinking, well, I kind of want to go back to a dating app. I had a baby the last time I went on a dating app, so I feel like I've completed a dating app. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not yeah. sure if I go on a date with someone from an app and they're like, oh, you know, the last time I was on this, I had a kid. Yeah, yeah. you're like, wow, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> like, I I remember, I've, I think I've spoken about this before, that like, I like, went on a dating app for the first time after like having a breakup or whatever it is. It was like ground zero, like with my life. I was like, yeah. what is happening? Why am I like this? And I've never been on a dating app. And my girlfriend's like, it's time to go on Raya Shani, you know? And I was like, oh my God. I started crying. Like it was just such a, uh, like I, I was like freaking out actually. I was like, my life is like this. I have to go on a dating app, but it's quite fun actually. Yeah. Kind of like cuts That's to the chase. Date now. Yeah. 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 It yeah. Is. I feel like everybody I know meets through dating apps. Loads of people use. So I have um, friends that got married to their partners really? on dating. Yeah. Yes. I've known like three, actually three um, of my friends or so two girlfriends. Yeah. Uh, work colleague uh, married. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Married and yeah. Yeah, two married. One That's just got people. one just got engaged, and um, work colleague married and having a baby. Oh, yeah, 
I love that. I love love. Yeah. yeah. You know, know what I think is really nice when you're starting to like manifest love is watching rom coms. Really? Like putting yourself in that energy of mm -hmm. being in love, that mm -hmm. feeling, and like it helps you to like sink into the feeling of it, which helps you to attract it. Wow. So I'm a big, uh, I'm in my rom com phase right now. <laughs> Great <laughs> advice. <laughs> I, love I that. one thing I love, like I use manifesting the vision boards on yeah. my Pinterest mood boards. Like that's my yes. visualization. I'm big on visuals. Yeah. Um, I have photographic memory as well. So really? Yeah. That's how I pass on my exams. <laughs> you are kidding. Yeah. That's amazing. She does. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really good. Um, so I'm like a true detective. Um, oh, that's, that's so <laughs> cool. Yeah, she I, like, a crave, I took a picture with my eyes. I remember. <laughs> <No>. So don't. <laughs> Oh don't God, I ask love me. That. Yeah, no. Yeah, if you I, ever need to dig up any dirt on social media, she's your girl. Yeah, just yeah. call I'm me. <laughs> Detective. Yeah. So I have like I have photographic memory. Yeah, I, even like for exams and to like draw this diagram, and I'm yeah. like I don't remember it. Like I don't, I didn't study it enough, yeah, yeah. but I visualize it, remember it, and I would just be like, wow, draw it like this, and so I'll get points on it. I'm like, cool. It's not great, guys. Like I, you need to start, like I'm very. I'm a bit of a nerd and I love to study in some way, yeah. but if, you know, things happen, you forget something or yeah, but the oh visuals God, and the diagrams. Yeah. 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 yeah Helps. So, so my advice with vision boarding would be this, mm. because I think when we have, um, especially if you love visuals, mm. I would separate vision boards and mood boards. Okay. So one thing that um, I've really found over the last couple of years is loads of people tag me in their vision boards, but I would say that they are mood boards. Mm. So mood board is like a vision, it's almost more of like an inspiration board. It's kind of like giving you like visual representatives, representation, sorry, of, you know, maybe the kind of house you like yeah. or the kind of sort of words to represent the feeling or, you know, and it's really pretty and it looks great. But an actual successful vision board that works needs to be ultra ultra specific mm. so it needs to have like the exact number of podcast listens you want the chart position you want you know where you want it to go from there like so i'm about you, to laugh because i'm like <laughs> i was like imagine trying to like create your like ultimate guy you'll be like cutting out like <laughs> michael b jordan's lips no, and then like, someone yeah. tagged brad me with eye, the brad pitt's eyes and you're like <laughs> yeah and Voila, then, and then frankenstein <laughs> turns up at your door i mean awesome <laughs> can you imagine just like oh, there he is yeah. <laughs> well so so do that just in so do a, a vision board like that just written so yes, my vision I do boards have zero pictures on them. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just a list of every goal that I have in like specific detail. Okay. And they I do both. work. And then if you are someone that's visual, yeah, I do a mood board yeah. separately. I do both. I think I journal every year. New Year's just um, happened just around the corner. And every year I write down an overview of like what happened in the past year and what I would like to change for the mm. next year and like what are my dreams and goals so beautiful. and I've been doing that for eight years now wow yeah um and it's just been amazing just to see the the journey and the transition mm. but also I've noticed the things that I've written down of what I want to achieve and even from years before they've happened incredible it's yeah. very very it's like in some ways spooky but it's like i see this for you and i think you i'm believing that you will get there and you want it you want it and yeah it sometimes it takes years and years and years but also i believe like there's a rhyme and a reason why yeah. i didn't get it and there's something maybe i had to learn yeah and maybe i need to work a little bit harder to yeah. like get to the specific goal that i want yeah. as well i didn't want to like have half of it i wanted all of it yeah but it's yeah, I writing it down is a really great idea too. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Roxy, you mentioned earlier you went on Jay Shetty's podcast. Yes, which is a massive podcast. Yes, it was on my vision board. I, wow. Yes, yeah. I, I figured you might have put it there. It was. Yeah, amazing. It what was, was that like? It was amazing. He's become a great friend now, and he is so lovely. And you know, it was. I had basically. On my 2022 vision board, I mean, I went big. The book hadn't even come out yet, but I was like, I really went big. <laughs> and I put things like American, I put like Sunday Times bestseller, multiple languages, seen at airports. 
I even put like takes my career to the next level. Wow. And then I put American Publishing Deal and American Morning TV underneath. And then I went on the Today Show that year. Wow. Um, and then across the center, I just said Jay Shetty. And what happened was then three days later, Jay started following me on Instagram. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's so weird. Mm. But then what happened was two months passed and I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna message him. That was me aligning my behavior, taking the risk. So I messaged him on Instagram and I was like, hey Jay, like would love to connect. Like <clears throat> if I could ever like, if, like I'm talking about this is my new book and I've this is my belief and my mission. And like, if there's anything we could ever do together. And he didn't reply. Mm -hmm. And that's when I could have been like, oh, he's not gonna reply, it's not meant for me. Mm. You know, it was a test from the universe. Or like, I'm not good enough, yeah. I didn't answer. Like and you I go was, through like- Yeah, and instead I was like, oh, okay, not the right time. And mm. then a few months later I messaged him again and he replied and was like, yes, I'd actually absolutely love you to come to my podcast um, in LA. And mm. so I went and it was amazing. Wow, congrats. Wow, I can't believe he followed you three days it was later. so weird. But things are, my team always say I'm like a white witch. I yeah. think I'm a feel. white witch too. <laughs> yeah. I've been told I'm a witch. I'm a white witch. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I really do think that when you're tapped into this practice and you're in alignment, things do seem spooky or you're like like I'll be saying to the team like last at the end of Christmas they were like what's your number one brand in the world you want to work with in 2024 I'm not joking two days later that brand reached out from the U.S. team I mean I'm not even based in the U.S. wow and um you know we're about to start a big partnership so amazing it's amazing so it really does it really is once you get into that flow and you know how to use it it does unlock a lot even for me this well, we started chatting in like 2020 mm -hmm. just to, sit, you know, be on the couch and see your growth. Oh, mm. And you. I've kind of like noticed and you put out there like this is what I want and this is where I yeah. want to go. And it's like been really, really beautiful to see like everything that you've asked for. It's like coming to fruition. And, you know, you're receiving that um, and you're very hardworking. But, um, yeah, no, it's really beautiful. And I, I love that. And it, make, it inspires me. Aww, yeah, so your work inspires you. so many. I love it. Oh, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> what are some of the other things that you've manifested? Oh, my goodness. I mean, really, I mean, really everything. I would say really everything. And, and in terms, I mean, career-wise, there's, there's been a, like lots. I mean, and it's kind of beyond my dr wildest dreams, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. But um, even things like I manifested my home. Uh, but I think for me, the biggest, like I kind of alluded to in the beginning, is that I've definitely reached a level of happiness and confidence that I didn't think was possible. But I would say that was actually quite recent. So I think that I've been on this journey myself while I'm also teaching it, you know, and I'm not, yeah. I've never kind of claimed to be like the finished product. You know, I've always really open and vulnerable with my audience. Yeah, they say open. if you want to learn something, teach it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. So, you know, I had, you know, 28 years of like deep unhappiness. It wasn't going to suddenly all go in a couple. Mm. Yeah. And so, but I kept growing and growing and, um, actually in January last year, I hit somewhat of a breakdown. I mean, basically 2022 was like this whirlwind of like, from a work perspective, it was like, oh my God, it was like a roller coaster. And it was so much like, I think I thought at that point, oh my God, I'm so happy now. But on reflection, I think I was just having a lot of adrenaline highs. Mm, yeah. Um, but still there was a lot that was unhealed. I was still really suffering from the extreme low self-worth and that was kind of going, coming in and out. It wasn't. I was more, I was getting more confident, but I was still battling some real demons. And um, so that was tough. And then by 2023, I kind of felt like I was having a breakdown. I was launching my second book, which was supposed to be this really happy time. And um, it was actually Drew who's here on my team. It was her first day of work and we were going to the launch and I just had a, a huge panic attack on the way. Could not stop mm -hmm. crying. I, for the first time had to cancel work, which I never do, but I was like, I can't put one foot in front of the other. I keep having anxiety attacks um, almost every day. I was sinking into like a depression. Wow. It was awful, mm. but I did know that my body was just giving me a sign like you have to stop. Okay. And so I set aside some time as much as I could. You know, you still have work commitments that you can't cancel, but what I could, I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna really go deeper into my healing journey. So I found a trauma specialist. I actually went to a functional medicine doctor, a hormone doctor, um, 
seeing a functional medicine doctor was the best thing I've ever done because uh, changing my actually what's going on inside had such a big impact on what was going on mentally. Yeah. Mm. Um, and really just kept on challenging all those limiting beliefs, using the practices I teach, using affirmations, meditations, hypnotherapy I went mm. to, you know, all these. I actually had hypnotherapy with Marissa Peer, who is phenomenal. Oh, wow. Um, I would highly recommend manifesting her on your podcast. She's okay. she's yeah. incredible. Marissa Peer. Marissa Peer. Adding she her to our vision. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> awesome. Like I could listen to her talk all day. She's so fantastic. Um, and then in September, I had a breakthrough. And something just clicked. And since then, I feel like my life, I feel like I just started my life. Wow. And I really am thankful to manifesting for that. And it's been so, it's like a different experience of life. It's amazing. It's interesting how we have to like kind of hit rock bottom mm. to like grow again. Yeah. Like I've noticed that through just my experience of life. It's like, um, really the, like the really tough times especially like last year like with the depression and all that it's like it was so bad but it's like I'm appreciative of it because yeah. it like creates this like tough skin we're like no like I want to yeah. get out of this okay but there's something wrong I need to do some work yeah. um self-work and then it just creates a really beautiful growth yeah that I'm so appreciative of yeah, yeah. I love that you're so honest about the fact that it hasn't all been you know roses for you since yeah. you, since you started on this manifestation journey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it isn't and exactly as you said earlier it's those periods of being uncomfortable or feeling sad feeling depressed whatever it is those are the ones that make you actually check in oh my god totally. and grow mm -hmm. from that yeah I mean, yeah. we've talked about this on the podcast before, but this is how this podcast was born. Yeah. Yeah. Shanina and I were both going through a diff difficult period <laughs> in our lives where we were forced to, you know, go inward and, and figure out what we really wanted. And now this thing that just feels like a dream to both of us has yeah. been born from that. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's really easy to not want to look back at your past. And I get a lot of people who, was, and I was actually like this. I was like, oh, I don't want to, what's the point in like, talking about my childhood like what the fuck is that gonna do mm -hmm. you know but actually the more you do this way you realize that until you heal the past mm. you will never free yourself yeah yeah like it's just not possible you have to to live differently you have to look backwards <clears throat> and address what's you know at the core of of that pain um but it's just so worth it yeah. and you know no matter what like no things haven't been rosy since but since the day i discovered manifesting my life has been infinitely better than it ever was yeah. and it's just that every six months i go through a rebirth it feels like that's awesome yes so what's next for you oh what well, is next where do you see yourself in five years oh my manifesting vision board yeah vision board right now <laughs> oh well we are going to be doing some online courses this year which Ooh. is amazing. really exciting and i'm starting to write my next book which is not on manifesting, but is within the self-development space. It's a very nice segue to manifesting. Oh, I'm um, excited. But yeah, it's a really, this year for me is a year of growth and enjoyment, like, and having fun. Yeah. Because I feel like I've just found confidence and happiness in a way I never have before, as I said. And so this year I want to enjoy it. I just want to enjoy life and that is my focus. Yeah. I love that. Not yeah. all work. Yeah, exactly. Play I, need play. I need play. You're going to go dating. some dating. Yeah. You're going to be yeah. dating. I need to just have fun and travel. And, you know, yeah, this is the year for that. Yeah. yeah. We're manifested um, going to Italy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's got, on our list. That's on our list. Yeah. You know, what? just, just listening to Roxy, like you and I really need to knuckle down and actually do. We're doing 80 20. We should do an 80 20 vision board. We, we should. Have to. Yeah. yeah. We'll do our personal yeah. ones and an 80 20 one. It's so I, good. I had it on my Pinterest mood board, I guess, but that's the mm -hmm. mood. But that's the mood board. That's we know the, the difference board. now. <laughs> yeah, I know the difference. But I'm sorry to take down your mood board. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> I feel like mood boards could be helpful though to They're sort of so get the great. vibe going to figure out what it is you want because often it's the foreplay. It's the foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the foreplay Not to get you to the foreplay. <laughs> foreplay. No, I love that. No, uh, mood boards are great. They're great. They're a the pretty fun part. Yeah. They look good and keep you excited and inspired. Yeah. You yeah. need to get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. No, I have a good vision board for my work and I think I, re I went last year, even though it was like. <laughs> I will say like a shitty year for me. And I was like, oh, wow, I did that. Oh, I did that. 
oh wow Shanina like that. you did that and yeah. so it does work in some magical white witch way <laughs> <laughs> it you know does. it does work it's insane I love it yeah I love doing that work I need to I have been doing the gratitude work and I kind of like stepped off it but yeah. that's something that you've mentioned today that I need to like that's really important I think like going back and diving into the guide the seven steps is yeah yeah and yeah. you gratitude. should do it as a team because we do that as a team every oh, wow. Friday we do a gratitude list for every good thing that happened within work and so like whatever any anything good that's happened for 80 20 no matter how small do it every Friday and it I mean I think it keeps you just attracting abundance and thriving but it also yeah. just reminds you of all the small steps that you're taking like when you start something new you know the hustle and the grind it's actually the fun bit yeah like it's exciting that period of growth is so incredible and you don't want to forget those little moments of joy and accomplishment yeah, wow. we've definitely got to add that to our weekly meeting. Yes, we do like Monday meetings now. Friday is like the, it's nice to finish a Friday with a oh, gratitude. Yeah. 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 Even just in a WhatsApp to each other, like Friday gratitude, just so you always remember to do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm doing that. I love that. I'm taking on that practice. Thank you. I feel like I've, I've, there's been so many takeaways from today. There's the gratitude and also the taking the aligned action. I feel like people will often say, you know, they'll make their vision board, their mood board, whatever, and they go, okay, that's what I want. And then they just take a seat and they just sit there and they wait for life to happen to them. Yeah. But that's not how manifestation no, works. No, sadly not. No. no. It's not that wouldn't easy. that be nice though? No, wouldn't it, wouldn't it? <laughs> George, you yeah. know what? Would it be nice? Because yeah. actually I think it's nice when we can work for things. Yeah. Yes. You know yeah. what? It's True. so life nice will be boring. to have that forward <laughs> momentum, the reason to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know, it's not, we're not meant to have it all, all the time. Yeah. We're meant to have something to strive towards and that's why you will reach goals and then you will set new goals yeah because like i said the fun is in the journey you know yeah. that's where where it gets exciting but yeah you know do like put your head down work towards something mm. is that is a real confidence builder to do the things you say you'll do it mm. really actually builds this sense of confidence and self-respect and self-trust yeah yeah I that's the that. other thing i i really got from from everything you said today is releasing attachment mm. like okay this is what i want and then and then just letting it go because for at least for I think I'm a pretty good manifester. Mm. And from my experience with the manifestation practice, I I feel like it might not show up exactly the way I stick it on my vision board or that I envision it. But if it doesn't show up that way, it shows up better. Yeah. Mm. You know, and I think that's and I think it's important to be open to that. Yeah. You know? Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. The oh. universe is working for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, this has Thank been so you. good. Thank you so much. I girls. appreciate so you. Nice. Thank I'm, you. I'm so glad that's worked out and that you're here on the couch and this is going to be so inspiring. Oh. You inspired me all over again and georgia but also for our audience so and i can't wait to see what's next for you oh thank you so much thank guys. you thank Amazing. you 